It's the first time since Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has had a chance to address the party rank and file since they achieved power in October. So loud music already here today and lots of excitement as delegates will be coming in. That's a, a couple hours from now to hear the Prime Minister speak. In the meantime, I'm joined this morning by Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale. Good morning. morning. How are you doing? Very well. How's your convention going? Uh, conventions are a combination of uh, great excitement and great exhaustion. Yeah. <laughs> and we're into the third day, uh, but it's a, it's a very, very excellent meeting. I think the delegates are in a very good mood. I was listening to you yesterday talk about real change, which mm -hmm. is uh, one of the catchwords for this, uh, this convention, celebrating right. the, the, the achievements and mm -hmm. moving on. And I thought of something in, the, in your mandate letter. Right. This mm -hmm. was every, a letter written to every minister from the prime minister. And can, may I quote to you? Sure. Okay. He says, uh, Dear Mr. Goodale, as minister, you will be held accountable for our commitment to bring a different style of leadership in government. This will include meaningful engagement with opposition and identifying ways to find solutions and avoid escalating conflicts unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. And then I thought of the fracas in the House of Commons <laughs> last week and wondered where was the real change. What did you think when you watched that mess? Well, I think for the most part, uh, the uh, the mood in the House uh, is substantially better now than it was uh, uh, before the, the election. Uh, I think there has been an effort, uh, uh, certainly on our side, and I think also on the opposition side, to to, to change the tone. Uh, that particular incident was, uh, was unfortunate on all sides. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, quickly made amends, uh, and I think that will simply underscore uh, how much we have to work at this and uh, and uh, maintain that that real determination to uh, uh, to make a difference. When things like that happen, does it detract from your message that things are going to be different in Ottawa now that the Liberals well, are in power? Well, it, it's a it's it's certainly a bump on the road, <laughs> uh, but the uh, the way the Prime Minister dealt with it so uh, so quickly, uh, both that evening and the next day, it was. Uh, it was uh, very, uh, very clear and decisive uh, the way he, he turned the page, uh, and uh, I think it, it, it will simply uh, uh, underscore uh, how how delicate that mood in the house is, uh, and how important it is for uh, for all of us to uh, uh, to work hard to try to keep improving the uh, uh, the, the tone and the content, uh, and to get on with the with the elements in our platform. Uh, about democratic reform and uh, parliamentary reform uh, and electoral reform uh, and, and, and change the, uh, uh, some of the rules behind the functioning of the institutions to reinforce that new tone that Canadians want. There's some serious business waiting for you on Monday when you get back to the House and there are three issues that carry a deadline. Of course we've been talking this weekend about Bill C-14 and assisted suicide which has not passed the House yet. Uh, Air Canada Bill C-10 on Air Canada outsourcing as well as the government has missed two deadlines now on the creation of the RCMP Union. You are Public Safety Minister. Why haven't those bills or those initiatives been passed? Well, in the, in the case of the, uh, the RCMP bill, uh, the Supreme Court ruling came down in January of 2015 saying that the, uh, the members of the RCMP indeed had the right to, mm -hmm. to select their own bargaining agent uh, and that uh, the government needed to pass legislation to correct that constitutional deficiency. Uh, the previous government didn't move at all on that initiative, mm -hmm. so we lost. 10 of the 12 months that the Supreme Court gave us to fix the legislation. But how many more deadlines can you miss? Well, uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the legislation was drafted, presented in the House, went through the committee. It's waiting for, for uh, final parliamentary approval and that's up now to the, uh, uh, to the opposition to determine when that will happen. The, uh, the, the government has taken all of the steps that it can take to put us in a position to meet the requirements of the Supreme Court. It's up to Parliament now to pass the legislation. The instruction from the Supreme Court is really to Parliament to do the job by a certain deadline. And the same, of course, applies in the case of, uh, of, of assistance in, in dying. Uh, the, uh, the Supreme Court laid out the time frame. The government has presented the legislation uh, as rapidly as that was possible to do. Uh, it's now in the hands of Parliament to dispose of. Uh, the deadline is uh, is coming up in about nine days, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, parliamentarians will have to weigh very carefully uh, whether they want to have uh, a regime in nine days that essentially has no rules, no framework, 
no safeguard, uh, a complete legislative vacuum. Is that is that what Canadians would want? Mm -hmm. I think not. You're an extremely experienced parliamentarian, and you are sitting on a front bench now that, by all accounts, is a miracle of gender and uh, ethnic parity. But to what extent, when you're trying to drive this agenda, this legislative agenda, does inexperience on the front bench show? Oh, I, I, I don't think that's been a factor uh, at all. The, uh, uh, the, the diversity, the freshness of that, of that front bench, the fact that it's 50-50 men and women, uh, I think that's a, that's a huge asset for the government. Yeah. Uh, and I notice around the cabinet table, I've, I've been around a few cabinet tables uh, historically, and uh, having, having that mix, that diversity, and, and, the, and the gender balance makes a huge difference in the conversation. What about the managerial skills? Oh, when you when you look at at, at, at the ministers that uh, that are that are carrying these burdens, uh, Jane Philpot in, mm -hmm. in health, uh, Jody Wilson Raybould in, uh, in in justice, uh, you just go down that front bench. Uh, they are proving themselves to be very competent ministers, and they're proving themselves also to to really be the embodiment of that that uh, that new tone. Uh, I think of uh, the, the, the pressure that the opposition has tried, tried to, uh, to throw at the Minister of Justice, for example, or the Minister of Health. They have maintained their composure, they have, they have maintained their focus, they have, they have always behaved in the House with, with, uh, with great, uh, great decorum, and they have, they have uh, addressed questions that have come to them, not with slough off lines, but with real substance. Uh, I think they're proving themselves to be uh, excellent ministers, and not just those two. Uh, the uh, the front bench, I think, is verifying uh, the prime minister's judgment about uh, the people that he wants to lead the parade in his new government. Ralph Goodell, thanks so much for coming in so early to talk to Canadians on CPAC today. <laughs> Glad to do it. All the very best. Take care.